Hello world, my name is Andy Silvers and I'm about to disagree with the whole internet. Alright, for those who don't know, I'm an author, a YouTuber, and award-winning filmmaker. Uh, on this channel, I like to cover a little bit about writing, but more recently, I've been digging into mobile workstations, namely HP's mobile workstations. But for this video, for the first time, I'm going to kind of branch out and talk about some other devices. Uh, in today's video, we're talking about the Surface Stu Studio 2 Plus, which is not a mobile workstation, but it is a desktop all-in-one workstation. And I think it's worth discussing because I do like it and it is a bit controversial on the internet. Uh, also, I want to let you know that this channel is not currently monetized. So if you would like to support the channel, please consider subscribing and liking. Uh, however, if you really want to support me more directly, I have three books that I have written for all different age ranges from ages 3 to 6. I have a book called The Very Colorful Caterpillar for ages 8 to 12. I have a coming-of-age story called Red Sprites and Blue Jets. And for ages 16 and up, I have an awesome contemporary fantasy called Solomon Grando vs. the Jupiter Witch. All of these books are available at the link in the video description. Alright, so today for the first time I'm departing from HP to talk about Microsoft. So Microsoft is a sort of premium brand that creates pretty much only premium products. They have ventured into some lower end products, particularly for classroom environments. But as a general rule, their Surface lineup is their highest end and basically only electronics lineup. Now, before we talk about the new Surface Studio 2 Plus, I want to first just say that the uh, comparison between Microsoft and Apple is, I think, noteworthy and interesting here. Both Microsoft and Apple create relatively few original electronic devices each year, and both of them target a premium high-end market, not the highest end, like server use perhaps, but certainly a more premium buyer. And then last but not least, they both make their own operating systems. So Apple creates Mac OS for all the Mac computers, and Microsoft creates Windows 10 and, of course, Windows 11 for all of their computers. So I think the comparisons are fascinating. And in my opinion, Microsoft is what Apple should have been. For instance, Microsoft puts touchscreens in almost all of their devices, whereas Apple puts touchscreens in almost none of their devices, except for the iPad, of course. So it's this really interesting sort of comparison because both companies are doing kind of the same thing, but in different ways. So obviously the semi-recent iMac with all the different colors came out, uh, and that was a really nice device, and I think that the Surface Studio 2 and 2 Plus are intended to be the direct competitor to that. And in my opinion, the Surface Studio 2 Plus is a significantly better deal and better option. I mean, it's a lot more expensive, so maybe not deal. But it's certainly a very strong competitor, particularly for 2D artists and animators. Now, I said that I'm going to disagree with the whole internet, and that is in the sense that my opinions on the Surface Studio 2 Plus, while not perfect, are more positive than I think a lot of the people on the internet, including professional uh, publications like Verge and CNET as well as even just regular online users who are commenting on the product. So in 2018, Microsoft released the follow-up to the Surface Studio, which was the Surface Studio 2. The Surface Studio 2 had the same basic industrial design, uh, but with updated specs. The problem with the Surface Studio 2, as many pointed out, was that the specs were simply not up to date. They were using CPUs from Intel that were easily one to two generations behind, even though all the other companies were using the latest and greatest. And that appears to be the same case with the Surface Studio 2 Plus. However, in my opinion, it's not as big of a deal as people are making it out to be. The first thing I want to do is just talk the specs of the new Surface Studio 2 Plus real quick. So it has an 11th gen i7 11370H processor, which is quad-core, uh, and is also a mobile processor, not a desktop processor. 
It has the NVIDIA RTX 3060 laptop graphics with 6 gigabytes of dedicated VRAM. The overall unit has 32 gigabytes of DDR4 storage and a terabyte of solid state uh, SSD storage. I assume it's Gen 3 because it doesn't clarify Gen 4. The device has a basically the same display as before but it is slightly upgraded. It is a 28 inch 3 by 2 aspect ratio multi-touch display with a resolution of 4500 by 3000 pixels. It is color calibrated out of the factory and has a contrast ratio of, of roughly 1200 to 1. A few other features include a 1080p full HD webcam which I really think should have been a higher quality webcam and it includes three USB-C ports that also double as Thunderbolt 4 technology which is really great to see because Microsoft for a while there was just avoiding Thunderbolt altogether and it features two USB uh, type A 3.1 ports one gigabit ethernet port and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack I really think the gigabit ethernet port should have been a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port considering the massive price but it is what it is it has Wi-Fi 6 Bluetooth 5.1 uh, and of course it supports the Surface Pen and the uh, Surface Dial. So I'm not going to go over every spec in detail. Instead I'm going to cover the device with the understanding that you already know most of the information about the device and you're just looking for a bit of a discussion about it. In that case, where do I agree and where do I disagree with the general internet's take? Well, I agree that it would have been better to have a 12th gen processor because why not? They're widely available now. Uh, I agree that a more powerful graphics card might have been a benefit. Uh, however, I don't agree substantially. However, I do significantly agree with the idea that Microsoft should, if possible, figure out a way to sell their incredible display as a separate display. Perhaps they could sell like a Surface Studio 2 where it looks the same as the regular Surface Studio 2 but there are no like PC components inside of it. Instead it's just the base with a power supply and some I.O. like um, HDMI in, uh, DisplayPort input, input and a few other things. Uh, and then they could sell it like that. It would still be very expensive but it would be one of the only really high quality touchscreen pen supported displays on the market but unfortunately that's not an option so when the internals of the device become outdated the display and the whole thing basically have to be thrown out I also agree with people that the 1080p camera is actually kind of lackluster considering how expensive and premium the device is it's not anywhere near as thin as a smartphone or even a laptop display so Microsoft really should have included a larger sensor with perhaps a 2160 or 1440p webcam. I think that would have been a great idea. And Microsoft knows this because they have included a higher quality webcam with their Surface Hub lineup. Anyway, let's start with what I disagree on. I don't think that 11th gen Intel CPUs in this particular case is the worst idea. I simply think that the CPU they've chosen was a bad idea. I think that a quad-core CPU in 2022, uh, bordering on 2023, was a mistake. I think that instead, perhaps an i7-11800H or 11850H would have been a significantly better choice. Both of those i7s can get up to roughly 12,000 in Cinebench R23, especially when properly cooled. And in theory, they should be properly cooled because it is a desktop with more room for cooling. Uh, however, I understand Microsoft's decision a bit more than others, I think, do. The i7 that uh, is available to Microsoft is a mobile chip, which means it's soldered directly to the motherboard. So that means when Microsoft orders these from Intel, who actually make the chips, they have to order them in bulk, and they have to make sure that they all work together with the motherboard, and the BIOS and everything is a, a, co a cohesive unit. And so, in order to do that, they have to do that in advance. They can't do it last second. They have to plan months in advance before the product really begins being assembled in order to ensure quality control. 
So my assumption is that Microsoft's engineers began the Surface 2 Plus development uh, before the 12th gen was really even announced, or at the very least before it was available. So they had to make a decision. Do we wait around to actually begin developing the product when 12th gen becomes more widely available? Or do we just go now with the 11th gen chips? And clearly that's what they did. Now, the 11th gen chips, uh, in terms of Intel's mobile chip technology, are actually a big deal. You see, my thinking and my belief of Intel's 10th gen mobile chips is that they're really bad overall. And the reason for this is because the technology at that point was being pushed to its limits. See, that technology being Intel's 14 nanometer process. So Intel basically used every, every ounce of power they could squeeze out of that 14 nanometer process by using a whole bunch of different tricks like shrinking the, uh, I believe it was the die size of the CPU package and a few other things that I can't really get into in the video. The point is that they were pushing it to the limit and when you push it to the limit, you're going to hit the limit eventually. And this is a big problem for mobile chips because mobile chips don't have the ability to just suck another 50 watts of power from the wall because often they're in mobile devices that just don't have another 50 watts to give. But Intel's 11th gen mobile chips were a huge upgrade. These chips used the 10 nanometer process and had significantly better performance. In fact, I had the Intel Core i5-10400H CPU in my old ZBook laptop, which had a pretty decent cooling solution, and I got, I believe it was a score of around 3800 maybe, in Cinebench R23, which is pretty bad. And yes, it was an i5, but it was also an H series, which means it should have been able to pull back 45 watts or so. However, my new ZBook with the i7-11800H, 8-core CPU by the way, got roughly 11,980 in a recent Cinebench R23 test. Obviously Cinebench is the only test that's relevant, but it is I think an important test to demonstrate sort of long-term performance of a chip. So, that chip, the i7-11800H or the 11850H, which is clocked a bit higher, would I think have been a better choice for the Surface Studio 2, even though obviously 12th gen would have been the best overall choice. As for the GPU, I actually think the GPU is not a particularly bad option. Yes, it's a mobile RTX 3060, not a desktop version, but again, by having it be mobile, it can be a little bit smaller and easier to fit into the industrial chassis that Microsoft has designed. Uh, I'm really glad that they are actually up to date on this, and that's important. There are no devices on Earth right now with a 40 series mobile chip, like let's say a mobile 4080, for instance. That just isn't a thing right now. So Microsoft did actually go as up to date as they could in terms of uh, NVIDIA graphics. And I think the 3060 is just right, being just powerful enough to really uh, make productivity uh, in Blender or in Toon Boon Harmony, which I'll get to later, really to boost productivity while not being so powerful as to be overkill and raise the price even more than it already is uh, for 2D artists who typically don't need it. So the main reason this device I think is acceptable, generally speaking, as is, is because of the intended use case. I see this device, and I think Microsoft does as well, not so much for content creators doing video editing, 3D animation, rendering, uh, or even advanced CAD work, I see this for more 2D CAD and of course all 2D applications, particularly artistry. So if you're doing 2D design in Photoshop, this device is more than powerful enough for Photoshop. Uh, perhaps some Lightroom for um, maybe large format uh, photo editing, and of course 2D animation. So let's take a look for instance at Toon Boon Harmony. Uh, which is the predominant 2D animation software in the industry right now. Uh, and Toon Boon Harmony is uh, an extremely advanced piece of software, and they have a list of hardware recommendations on the website that match fairly closely to what Microsoft has here. So they recommend a uh, Core i7 CPU, which the Surface Studio 2 Plus has, 32 gigs of RAM, which the Surface Studio 2 Plus has, and they recommend an, let's see here, a GTX 1060 
which is a very old graphics card at this point. Uh, and they say, however, that you can run Toon Burn Harmony on a minimum of a GTX 560, which is so beyond old that, I mean, there's no reason you couldn't get your hand on better. But uh, the point is that even my uh, even Toon Boom, uh, the company does not recommend significantly powerful hardware for their uh, for their most powerful and most uh, heavily featured piece of software. Uh, it does say an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 would be the best graphics card, but I would believe that's for if you're pushing Toon Boon Harmony to its limits, uh, perhaps doing 8K renders and so on and so forth. But the 3060 is certainly very close to that. And so you can see that Microsoft has checked off all the most needed boxes in the Surface Studio 2 for 2D animators using Harmony 22. So if you're a 2D animator, I think that the new Surface Studio 2 Plus, while I think that the i7-11800H CPU would have been a better choice, will still work well for nearly all of your needs. And as before, the display is incredible. 4500 by 3000 uh, resolution. My favorite aspect ratio across uh, all laptops, um, desktop monitors, and um, tablets is 3x2 aspect ratio, so Microsoft nailed that. And they use 3x2 across nearly all of their devices, which is also excellent. However, this is an editorial piece. I don't have the Surface Studio 2 in-house to test. So let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, are you a fan of Microsoft Surface devices? And if you are a, are a 2D artist, would you consider the Surface Studio 2 Plus? Please let me know in the comments. Th tell me what you thought about the video. And I will see you in the next video.